Good evening, my dear friends, we gather this evening to celebrate love. This is why we are here. Stacy and uh, Jeff are going to promise in front of all of us, in front of God, that their love for each other will be eternal. So please join me in prayer in reflection this evening so that God will bless them both, will bless their families, will give them good health, happiness and peace in their life. And I love this moment of silence when the music stopped because I think that we feel God's presence at this time. This piece of property, it's a piece of heaven, and God is here in a special way in each and every one of us. So we thank Him for His loving presence. Let us pray. God, our Father, you have taught us through your Son that love is the fulfilling of the law. Grant to these your servants that loving one another, they may continue in your love until their lives end. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. With every celebration, especially with a marriage, we always use the Word of God. And I picked up a very short passage from the Bible, from the letter of Paul to the Corinthians. St. Paul wrote this passage 2,000 years ago, but it is still so relevant for us today. And Paul describes to us what real love is. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and love endures all things. Love never ends. When I was a child, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, and I reasoned like a child. But when I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. And now, faith, hope, and love abide. These three, and the greatest of these, is love. In a few minutes, In a few minutes, Jeff and Stacy will share the vows with us. They will look at each other, they will hold hands and repeat those beautiful words of commitment. Now before they do that, I like to leave three simple words with Jeff and with Stacy. Uh, I believe that these three words are gentle reminders for the years ahead. They summarize, I think, what God expects of you now as husband and as wife. 
they also contain the basic ingredients of a successful marriage. The first word is share. You obviously will share many things after you leave these beautiful grounds. <coughs> the congratulations and the gifts of the guests are a start. The wedding cake is a symbol. But you will share much more your time, your money, your bodies, and your home. But I believe that above all, you need to share your feelings. The joys and the sorrows, the successes and failures of life. You need to communicate inner feelings to get them out of one's heart into the heart of the other. So, for example, when you feel neglected or angry, you somehow must convey this, even when it is painful. And when you feel taken for granted or you feel hurt, you also must communicate those sentiments, whatever the cost. So a practical suggestion to make sure you do communicate, you do share, every day spend a few moments simply talking, listening to one another. But I invite you to also listen with the heart. We listen with the ears, but we need to listen with the heart. To really see what is Stacy trying to say to what is Jeff implying by these words? What is going on in his heart, in his mind? So that's the first word, sharing. Sharing in married life is imperative. It's very important. The second word is care. To care for each other. You may share or communicate perfectly. But unless you care, it makes little difference. You see, care is a synonym for love. And love entails giving, and a lot of giving. In fact, marriage is a give-take, a giving-receiving relationship. And there is in it more giving than receiving. If you care, for each other, you will be more concerned about making each other happy than in having your own way. This is quite difficult. If you really care, you will be more concerned about making each other happy than in having your own way. If you love, you will be more intent upon pleasing each other than in fulfilling your own desires. Care or love means unselfish giving. This is really the essence of married life. So a second practical recommendation. Let the last words of each day, regardless of what has gone before, be, I love you. That means I care for you. That means I put you first in my life. That means I am ready to forgive anything, ready to not to have just my wishes and desires, but put yours first. So that phrase, I love you, is loaded. And the third word is be fair, be fair. All is bliss today. The weather operated after that storm we had last night. And this is, as I said, a most beautiful place. I don't think you could have picked up a better place than this. The guests are all here, the families, the friends, some of them traveled for far away. So everything is bliss today. I am sure that the food and the drink will be awesome as well. 
but it will not be always like this. Uh, perhaps you may feel that this is a negative comment, but I think we understand we are practical. In this world, we don't live in constant bliss. There are days and days. And in every marriage, there are disagreements, arguments, misunderstanding. Sometimes there are hurt feelings and perhaps even harsh words. And you may feel perhaps at this moment that this is impossible. But this happens because we are human beings. And where there are human beings, there are mistakes, misunderstandings. We are imperfect creatures. And sometimes we fail and aggravate others. Now, what do we do when this happens? These differences can either spoil and destroy your love or strengthen and deepen it. What is the secret here? Quickly reconcile. Quickly heal wounds. Don't let wounds fester. Don't keep them in your heart. That's part of the sharing. Always make up before you fall asleep. Never let the sun go down on your anger. So these are the three words that I would like to leave with you, Stacey and Jeff. Share, care, and be fair. Apart from that, I am sure that everyone sitting here will join me to wish you as much happiness, as much joy, and fulfillment, and peace as the world can give. This is our prayer for you today. You are a very beautiful couple. It was such a pleasure working with you and meeting you. And uh, we wish you an awesome beginning and an awesome end in this life and in the next. Amen. <coughs> now we come to the wedding vows, but before Stacy and Jeff share their vows, I have a few questions to ask. And I will start with um, Jeff and all he needs to answer is, I will. <laughs> Jeff, will you give yourself to Stacy to be her husband, to love her, comfort her, honor and protect her, and forsaking all others to be faithful to her so long as you both shall live? Stacy, will you give yourself to Jeff to be his wife, to love him, comfort him, honor and protect him, and forsaking all others to be faithful to him so long as you both shall live? Now I address the families of the couple. Do you members of the families of Jeff and of Stacy give your blessings to this marriage? Okay. Randy, I want to hear you. Yes, sir. And to all of you present here, you are witnesses to these vows now being made. Will you do all in your power to support and to uphold this marriage. So I invite Stacy and Jeff to hold hands now. These vows could also be renewed in your hearts, uh, those who are married, 
as well. Please repeat after me. I, Jeff, take you, Stacy, to be my wife, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish for the rest of our lives, according to God's holy law. This is my solemn vow. I, Stacy, take you, Jeff, to be my husband, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish. According to God's holy law, this is my solemn vow. And now we bless the rings. Dear friends in Christ, let us ask God to bless these rings that they may be a symbol of the vow and the covenant Jeff and Stacy have made this day. Blessed are you, God of steadfast love, source of our joy and end of our hope. Bless these rings given and received that they may be a symbol of the vow and the covenant Stacy and Jeff have made this day. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Jeff, please repeat after me. Stacy, I give you this ring as a symbol of my vow. With all that I am and all that I have, I honor you in the name of God. to each other by solemn vows signified by the joining of hands and the giving and receiving of a ring. I declare that they are husband and wife in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Those whom God has joined together, let no one put asunder. Amen. Please, the congregation, show an approval of this marriage. Let us now pray together as our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And 
finally we have this very beautiful blessing. It's called the blessing of the hands. So I invite the couple to join hands, please. These are the hands of your best friend, young and strong and full of love for you, that are holding yours on your wedding day as you promise to love each other today, tomorrow, and forever. These are the hands that will work alongside yours as together you build your future. These are the hands that will passionately love you and cherish you through the years and with the slightest touch will comfort you like no other. These are the hands that will hold you when fear or grief fills your mind. These are the hands that will countless times wipe the tears from your eyes, tears of sorrow and tears of joy. These are the hands that will tenderly hold your children. These are the hands that will help you to hold your family as one. These are the hands that will give you strength when you need it. And lastly, these are the hands that even when wrinkled and aged will still be reaching for yours, still giving you the same comfort as they do today. The peace of the Lord be always with you. This concludes our celebration. Now, of course, we have to sign government papers so that Stacy and Jeff will pay more income tax from now on. So I'm sure there will be some nice uh, music at this time as I invite the matron of honor, please, and the best men to also come to the table. Thank you. Yes, please, yes. Um, yes. <laughs> Just a signature. And Al is a witness to all this, you see. Would you write your name
Thank you. Okay. You sign in here, number 44, please. Thank you. So do we walk away now? I thought you were just deciding which one is yours. Take one. I like this one. <laughs> because I know Jeffrey will lose it. Right. Have I given it to him now? Okay. Are we standing up there and then walking? No, we're all going to stand like we were. He'll announce us and then we'll leave the same way we can. Watch my dress. Why don't you look like that person? Mr. and Mrs. Kern. 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 Kern.